Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you very much for coming to the live lecture series. Uh, today, we're doing a tourism destination image. Okay, brilliant. Thank you so much for that introduction. Very warm welcome to everybody. Uh, my name is Barbara. I'm Dr. Barbara Cherifi, and I'm senior lecturer in tourism. And I'm going to be delivering this lecture today on, on destination image. So a uh, little bit, uh, just a background about uh, myself. I, I did get my PhD in, in um, tourism. I did my master's in tourism management, but my, my BA was also in hospitality and, and tourism management. And I've been really interested in, in the tourism industry for uh, since I was uh, very young, really, I've worked in a number of countries in, in, in tourism, um, uh, Greece, I'm from Czech Republic, so in the Czech Republic, um, in, in the UK, of course, as well. So um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, I, I really enjoy uh, tourism as, as a discipline, and I really enjoy uh, teaching that. Um, so uh, that's just a bit of background about myself. And as you know, like you're, but you're here because you're interested in, in tourism. So um, I'll in a minute, I'll start the, about the destination image, but just um, bear in mind that, you know, the tourism is really an exciting career uh, in, in tourism and uh, studying it in London means that you get to explore a lot of uh, places uh, in London as a tourism uh, professional as well as a, as a future tourism professional so there is a real advantage advantage to studying uh, tourism in in London and uh, Middlesex also is really um, amazing in terms of the diversity of students that we have in and especially that's very useful for for tourism because then you get to uh, speak to people from so many different countries and then that really enriches you as also obviously as a person but also as a, as a future uh, tourism professional as well uh, so that's just wanted to introduce that and today is a lecture so I'm going to be talking a lot but bear in mind on the program we have a lot of different formats how we teach so uh, there's always like seminars where there's a lot of interactions sort of conversations so we check with you if you understand everything in the lecture you know making sure that we give you a lot of examples making sure that we give you a lot of um, exercises to do that it's not it's basically a lot of interaction. So I'm aware that today today is the lecture that's that the format, but be aware there is a plenty of ways how we how we teach um, in, on on the program, of course, on on, on those uh, on on the programs. So without further ado, I'm going to start on the destination image as as promised here. So let me just go here. The next slide here is on. Um, so this is the destination image so the next slide is on outline today's lecture so what exactly are we going to do um, what is destination image as a concept uh, then why is it important what are the different types of destination images what are the different characteristics of these images how is destination image formed? What are the alternatives? And how is it used in, in marketing? Yeah. So just to give you a little bit of, of a taste of that. So if we are looking at the what is destination image? So there are obviously plenty of definitions. But if you think about what is destination image, is that visual or mental impression of a place held by the general? public so how people imagine places basically that's that's what it is and um you can think of any place uh, for example i put here a picture of uh, hastings because i take uh we take our first year undergraduate students uh, to hastings as as a field trip so thinking about you know what is your image of that place as as a destination you know like what what comes to your mind basically when you think uh when you think about hastings in the uk probably a lot of you have not heard of it much or or they you know a little bit uh, but yeah so think about 
a place, but destination image does not have to be only about a place you have never visited. It can you can have an image of a place even that you have visited and you still have that mental representation of a place. So why is it so important? Why do I talk about it today? Because obviously without image, uh, a, a favorable image, there wouldn't be tourism. So it really does influence where we travel because if you're thinking about it, okay, I, I choose where I want to travel based on what I think about that place, right? That's so that how we imagine a place influences where we travel. Secondly, the second thing that's also very important is that destination images we hold influence satisfaction levels as well as loyalty to a destination. So what I think about the place will affect how satisfied I am with that visit. Because if I have a really high expectations, and then I go to that place and that really does not live up to my expectation that will very much uh, influence uh, my satisfaction levels, right? So that's obviously the expectations are based on that destination image, what, what, what I think they are very much linked. And then also loyalty to a destination. So if I like it there, um, if my if my image is positive that I uh, or my image is what I want it to be, then I'm likely to visit it again. So again, uh, links to those economic benefits for the destination. Yeah, so making sure that uh, if if the place has got a great image, then it attracts a lot of visitors and attracts a lot of money to the destination. So um, as you can imagine, there's been a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, studies on destination image. Um, I've, I've done a few of them, but there is a huge, huge number of studies on, on this topic. The good thing about um, higher education is that we give you different options, like what you can look at uh, and you know, what, what you can read to see things from different perspective as well. So just, you know, there is not only one way of seeing things, but in academia, we always, you know, there are a lot of different ways how, um, how a phenomenon or how a thing, if I put it bluntly, can be, can be explained or, or defined. So uh, that's, that's the good thing that we always give you a variety of, of sources. So as I said, destination as uh, this image is one of the most research concepts in tourism. Um, there are different types of destination images as well. So um, again, you've got some uh, some definitions here. Um, I just want to, in simple words, if if I put it simply, then you will have cognitive image means what you know about a place. So let's say I know about, I would know about Paris, that there is um, an Eiffel Tower, yeah, and then um, uh, yeah. So 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 that that what that what I would know. I would know the the flagships, let's say, uh, or so on. So that's the cognitive image, yeah? And then you can see here, there is also appraisive components that are um, either affective or evaluative. So affective means how do I feel about the place, right? So if I, how do I feel towards Paris? Well, I feel really positive, I really like Paris. I feel really positive to, towards Paris. So that's, that's the affective image, right? But that can be obviously on a spectrum. You can like some destination, not like others and so on. So, but that's the affective image. So if I'm talking about affective image, it's how I feel about it. And also evaluative image, like how do I evaluate the place? Uh, what, uh, what, how, do I, uh, how do I evaluate that? How do I think about that? And lastly is the conative. Do I want to go or not? That's simple as that. Conative image, if in my mind, based on what my mental image is, what, what I think about that place, do I want to go there or not? And that's what we call the conative image, okay?
So as I said at the beginning, if there's somebody just came, uh, obviously today is a lecture and normally we have a lot of uh, seminars as well, or in, in case of my module that I'm doing in the, with the first years, um, the TOU 1012 Opportunities and Resources in Tourism, we have labs as well. So we would have exercises on whatever we do in the lecture to make sure that you get all the concepts right, that, that you understand. And if you have always any questions, you, can, you are always very, very welcome to to ask, uh, I really encourage you to ask uh, any questions during the, the, the labs there as well. So uh, another way of looking at destination image is if it is organic or if it is an induced image, right? So again, it might sound a little bit difficult, but, but it's, it's, it, if I put it in a simple way, organic image is, uh, conveyed without market uh, without marketing so uh, 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 yes, organic image is conveyed let's say if some friend tells you about what they have experienced at that destination and they tell you oh this is what i've seen this is this is a nice thing to uh, a nice place to visit this is organic it's not like marketing uh, it's not induced right so organic image remember conveyed in an unintentional manner whereas if i um uh, listen to uh listen to an ad or if i see an advertisement or if i read an advertisement of it for a destination that is induced image right so that is the difference between organic image that's without marketing conveyed in an unintentional manner and then induced image, which is uh, conveyed deliberately through marketing. Okay. And then obviously there are other distinctions um, uh, that uh, come out of this, but uh, this is the, the basic, the basic one is organic and induced. Moving on to the next slide, what are the characteristics of these images? So we said, why, what is image? We said, why is it so important? I mentioned some of the, I've mentioned some of the types of image um, so that you know uh, the, basic, the basic theory, but it also, it's also important to realize what, how are these images? What are the characteristics of these images? So what I want to share with you now is just some of the findings of my uh, of my PhD because I did my PhD on on destination image um, and um, what came out is some some of these characteristics of these images. So I looked at the uh, check images of destination London um, held by people who have never visited it uh, by three hundred people and what came out um, is that. Um, people would compare these images with own experiences, of course. So uh, with own um, their own sense of culture, all sense of um, experiences as well. So you, you can see some quotes here, um, uh, how, they, how they refer to it. We have, uh, for example, here, it's impossible to avoid comparing with the life in the Czech Republic, or they wrote in London, I would be focusing on tasting the different kinds of beer, barley, upper fermented that are rare in the Czech Republic. So it's always that um, there seem to be a lot that comparison with uh, the own um, experiences of, of those uh, potential tourists. Secondly, um, people uh, would always have these archetypal images as well. So what does that mean? That, um, as you can see here, you've got some of the quotes here, but people would associate with London with other big cities and uh, they would see it as a big city. If they've never visited London, they would always uh, make, make a reference to other big cities that they, they have seen and what is a city for them uh, in general. So that is the archetypal images. So uh, it's good to build the, the marketing on that as well. Um, what also came out is that people really base their images very much on what they perceive to be as a credible source. So um, what, what does that mean is that they, uh, 
mention a lot their friends, they mention a lot, for example, films, uh, they mentioned a lot of uh, different sources that were very much seen as credible, something they, can, they could believe in. Only a few people mentioned specifically like a promotion or, or a specific, uh, specific type of adver advertisement. It was mainly very much influenced by what they perceived to be as credible image sources. And uh, last few things here that uh, persistence of destination image also came out in this study. So it, uh, what does it mean that it, these images are really hard to change? So once you have an image that you gain, let's say at school, uh, when, when you were young, the people related to that, that it's, it's actually hard for them to change that image that they still have that image from a long time ago from when they were when they were a child they read in books um, and that obviously has got implications for marketing as well for destination marketing so making sure that uh, when you you decide to um, design a marketing for, for the destination to attract more visitors being aware of this image then it's hard to change them uh, so it's good to invest in actually um, ex ex expanding on these images rather than changing them completely, because that would be very costly to change them. Uh, it would be a massive job because, as you can see, these images tend to be uh, quite persistent in people's minds. So it's hard to change them completely. OK. And then something that relates briefly to what we've said uh, before, what I've said before, that the cultural distance, so people related to the, their own culture in relation to the image that they were having. So always those comparisons with their own culture and uh, with their own place of residence as well, um, in terms of where they lived, if it, was, um, if it was more of a city area or not, that also came through in those responses as well. Yeah, so that's, that's what I mentioned, the uh, image, and uh, image, uh, image and environment with country of residence. So it's always that those comparisons. And also, uh, lastly, the, the, the presence of tourists, working foreigners, as well as goods in place of residence, that also influence how people think about that particular destination too, okay? So, just told you some some of the characteristics that um, define destination image that came out of the study that that I've done that this uh, this doctoral research. But how is destination image formed? Because we said like how it's why it's so important. We said what are the types. We said like what are the characteristics. Um, but how how is it formed? Okay, we said that it's quite persistent, that it's uh, based on believable sources. Well, of course, it depends on the destination, but this is something that came out again of, of uh, one of the studies that I, I did, um, is that a lot of people would um, base their image on the credible sources, as I said, so books, for example, or those who were there, like friends or relatives or uh, so on, TV, films, school, magazines and newspapers, internet, media, radio and promotion. Um, so you can see that there is a difference. Uh, it's, it's obviously from the one that's got uh, had mo most percentage here. And you can see I've made a comparison between metropolitan large town area and then small town rural area as well. So those numbers slightly differ there as well. Um, so yeah, I would like to just say that this research was done in, in library. So that obviously uh, must have had an impact on that, on those books. Having said that, there's also obviously those who were there um, are a large proportion. So just to give you a basic idea in terms of how do we form, form these images as well. And um, as I've mentioned briefly before, there is this checkness of uh, destination image sources that it is always filtered through where people are. That is not just about the destination promoting. Here we come, this is our advertisement uh, come, but it's also about you know, how that is interpreted by that 
place of re residence, uh, in that place of re residence of potential tourists. So let's say, in this case, checkness of sources, um, you know, what, what are the documentaries that are produced in that particular countries and, and so on. So it's not just up to that um, destination. I told you at the beginning that uh, obviously I, when I started talking about destination image, I told you think about the, the uh, image of Hastings as, as, a, as a place because I'm taking my first year uh, students normally for residential to, to Hastings. But uh, this is another trip that I'm also doing on this, on this, uh, on my module with, with the first year some tourism. This is to Camden Town. And um, yeah, so uh, again, think about, you know, Camden Town, I don't know if you know Camden, uh, Camden Town in London, probably most of you will, I'm sure most of you will know. So, but think about in this case, um, what formed an image of Camden Town for you? Is it social media? Is it, uh, um, is it um, I don't know, um, school? Is it, is it um, a film you've seen or is that, so think about in your own mind if you know if you know Camden Town if you don't know Camden Town in London uh, then you can think of any other destination that that you have visited so think about yourself you know apply that to yourself how uh, what um, what image uh, how was this image formed yeah so just to give you a bit of bit of examples here as well so yeah, I've talked about a lot about destination image, just to make sure that you, you know what it is. And just a quick reminder, so we said that uh, destination is image is a mental impression of a place held by general public. Uh, then we talked about why is it so important. We talked about, obviously, uh, the influence to travel, the satisfaction levels, loyalty, and so on, so bringing money to the destination, economic impacts. Um, we've talked about the types of images, like cognitive, what we know, affective, how we feel towards it, conative, would we like to go. We've talked about organic image, which is uh, the, the one that's not uh, conveyed through marketing and we talked about induced image which is conveyed through marketing and we've talked about some of the I've talked about some of the characteristics of destination images um, just for your uh, interest we've talked about the uh, image sources of destination image and now I just want to tell you well there's not just destination image and as I prompted earlier on uh, in um, in higher education we always try to present you with different concepts different ways of looking at um, the reality a different different way so that you can make your own um, your, your own uh, judgments you can make your own picture and uh, why say that because the next slide is on the alternatives uh, to destination image so obviously as i said destination image as um concept or as as a term is so 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 much research i mean it's as i said one of the most researched in the whole of tourism yeah but there are alternatives and and one of the alternatives is mentioned in one of the the uh, one of the publications that I have also um, co-authored, as you can see here, and it's called Imagined Experiences of a Destination, right? So it's not just um, image as a static, because destination image is, okay, this is the mental image that you have in your mind, this is how it looks, and so on. Whereas, if you're thinking about a destination, like what you are going to do there, how you're going to feel, what are going, what you are going to experience in terms of the, um, and I've got the, the the table here. What are you going to experience in terms of the, obviously visually, but also olfactory in terms of the smells. So what will you what will be the smells like at the destination? Yeah, for example, um, are there going to be a lot of spices? Are there going to be uh, you know how how is this uh, how is the olfactory aspect of that? 
what are you going to taste? It's it's a massive, massive aspect of tourism, like what gustatory Im imagined tourist experience. So what are you going to taste at the destination? What are the special dishes? What are the special drinks? What uh, what it is that that you expect to be experiencing in terms of the taste? So that's the gustatory images tactile so again thinking about what if you're thinking about it as this destination what are you going to be touching in terms of um, at, 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 the dest at the destination right uh, imagine feelings at the destination also how are you going to feel like what what came out in 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 uh in the study is that uh, for example if people didn't speak much um much of that language they would feel a little bit um anxious about that language as well like about that language barrier uh sometimes so oh, obviously very positive feelings as well so again there is a wide range of of, of feelings um that uh, can be uh, imagined um uh, imagine physical behavior at the, uh, at the destination so how you think you are going to get around that destination is it going to be easy to get from a to b are you planning to take uh you know trains the local uh, or are you uh, local transport or are you going to uh get uber or are you going to you know it's it's really uh the, that uh, how you're going to move around uh, that place how you imagine moving around that place yeah how are you going to um, imagine, uh, obviously, imagine perceived social identity at the destination? So again, how, how will you feel as a tourist at, at, at that destination? And what will you think there? Um, and also, I don't think I've put here uh, the, the, uh, what we'll be listening to. So that's, that's obviously the auditory images as well. So how, uh, how the sounds will be like, what the music will be like, what the, uh, what the bustle of the city, let's say, will be like. So why I'm talking about this a lot is that I um, think that we, we need to really think about um, you know what sets the tourism apart from virtual experiences because people have been recently having more and more virtual experiences but there is a real first for actual experiences of course and that is that is obviously why why we do tourism uh, and the, this a lot of these things and most of these things cannot be replaced by um, cannot be replaced virtually. So, for example, the taste, the the smells, the 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 even the physical feel uh, the the physical feelings at the destinations, you know, the, the temperature and so all that obviously comes together to form that experience. So that just to give you a bit of context, this this concept is called imagine experiences of a destination. So that's that's another, if you like, alternative to destination image. How we think about a place. To be fair to destination image, uh, it's not just what I showed you. That destination image is just cognitive. What we know, how we feel, what we do. There are also sensory destination images uh, being researched recently. So what I just told you about the auditory or um, uh, like what we hear about uh, that place or um, uh, what we Im imagine he hearing at that place or what we imagine tasting. These are all things that are also can also be a part of the destination image in a static way, if you like. So destination image, if you imagine, it, is like a snapshot of like this is my mental image, how it is like. Uh, this is in my mind. Whereas the imagined experience is more like what I would experience at that place if I would go there. So that is, I think, the the key difference here. So again, I put up the, the links here when we would be uh, obviously during our if uh, hopefully we'll be having our lectures together and then just bear in mind, I always put up the slides um, in advance of the lecture so people actually can download it in their own time if they want to, they can print it out. Um, I put up 
uh, I put in the click through, click through links as well, so they can just click through. So once you're obviously enrolled at the, uh, at the university, then you can just click through it. It'll take you straight through that source. So it's easy for you to access that information. We also have obviously all this information on the platform that's called My Learning uh, for this module. So you, you are able to actually access all the written in the reading list everything that you need to read for that week but i i tell you what is basic what everybody will will aim for something else uh, or hopefully everybody is aiming for the you know to read everything everything but sometimes it's, it's not possible so i always say this is this are the, the key things that you need to that you need to know and this art, this is some of the further reading. If you're interested or if you really, really want to do extremely well on the module, this is the further, further reading. So you have always this extra links as well. But just to give you a bit of um, background that you can see here, this click through link. So that's that's only you're able to like click through that. Now, if you it would click through this link, it would just take you to a page that where you, it would ask you for subscription to pay if you're not a student of of the university whereas once you're a student at the university the university obviously pays for those databases and pays for those articles so that you are able to access it it's in your fees it's in your once once you're enrolled as a student it is obviously the, this this all this uh journal articles and all the resources are uh, just click through for you but if you would be trying to do it now it would ask you to um pay pay a lot of uh money but that's yeah just to give you a bit of background on that. And yeah, and then uh, another one, which I said, alternatives to destination image. So I said that imagine, uh, imagine experiences of a destination, but also bearing in mind that destination image is a play, how we imagine a place as a tourist destination. That is what it is. Whereas obviously places are imagined as uh places for investment, places for uh, living. And that's the difference between destination image versus place image. And this is another study uh, that uh, I co-authored uh, co with uh, Dimitri Stilidis uh, and um, TC, uh, Professor TC Melever. And it's on exploring the mental associations of London again. A different study, but looking at uh, the difference between destination image and place image yeah so what are what are the differences but i just briefly mentioned to you like obviously in the in the first year just need to know okay destination image is how we imagine a place as a tourist destination whereas place image is how we imagine a place let's say for investing as i said or for for a uh, resident for a place to to live in um you've got another link here and then why are we doing all this? Uh, because obviously it's, as I said, you know, what, what you know about the place will influence where you go and influence where you spend money. And that's how the destination actually, how the, that's how the businesses get, they, they get their customers, right? That, that destination. So for that, it's important uh, to realize that this destination image is used in destination marketing. So we're asking uh, in destination marketing, we're asking people, okay, what do you think about this place to be able then to alter it a little bit or to brand a little bit to, 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 to promote what we want. So like this, um, more people would come or the people that we want to come would would come a little bit yeah so uh, or more so that's that's the whole point of the destination image is that it's a key part of destination marketing so you can see here destination marketing is trying to sustain alter or develop images so what i just said is to alter but obviously you, you might choose just to sustain it if it's a good destination image you might just want to say okay this is how i want to be promoted and you don't need to change it at all so you just might want to keep it sustain yeah or alter change a little bit or develop further images in order to influence prospective uh, buyers um, expectations and um, yeah, so one of the most important factors in 20 tourists, we've said this is destination image. So it's just for you to, to uh, remind you of that. 
So we need to realize when we're thinking about the des destination image, okay, how do we want to portray this destination image? And for that, we need segmentation, right? So types of segmentation is geographic, sociodemographic, uh, psychographic, behavior, product related, trip purpose, expenditure benefits. Are you thinking, oh, I'm, I'm just mentioning so many different terms here, but let me reassure you, you know, when we have actual lecture, there is a lot of time where we spend actually applying these terms uh, in those labs in those seminars we discuss it's it's you know you talking it's it's basically that uh, making sure that you understand everything 100 percent and the great thing about our course is that we are all in our team we have a great team on the program we work really well together and um the great thing is that as far as i know everybody's really keen to kind of um they're there to support you we, we are here to support you so you know if you have any questions we're so happy to answer your questions in uh in the seminars or in the labs obviously or um yeah uh, in, in case of my module, I always tell, tell students, you can come to my consultation hours. Uh, if you feel like you want to talk to me also about explain something one-to-one, -one, you can always uh, uh, just email me as well. Or you can always ask me in the seminar or in the lab. You can always, um, uh, this is important, send your draft because of what on my module on the, in the first year, uh, you always have like a, a opportunity to do a draft of your work so i would really encourage you to do that because then you get my feedback without actually having the 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 mark right uh, so um without me marking it first so basically you send in whatever you can produce the best possible piece of work i look at it give you detailed comments of how it can be improved then you go and then change whatever you want to change or what needs changing. And then once you submit the summative, the, the, the uh, work for marking, then you are putting yourself in, in a really good position to uh, achieve the best possible piece of, you know, the best possible grade because, and also, uh, you know, I know that some of you in the first year, uh, so, so not maybe some of you, but some some students in in um, first year, they uh, they are not sure if okay, this is my first year at university. I'm not sure am I, am I doing this right or not. So the drafts are really invaluable. Um, I always tell my students, even if it's unfinished draft, you know, I obviously I'm very happy to look at the full draft and I really encourage everybody to do that. But sometimes if you don't have the time, it's, it's good at least to submit for, for my module, at least to submit something so that, um, you know, I can give you at least some feedback on if you're heading the right direction, if it's if it's the right way. But the best possible way is to submit the whole thing if you can. It's it's uh, the, the the draft is not compulsory. It's it's just optional, okay? But it's just something that an example of how much we want to help you to really, you know, just make sure that you achieve your full potential. Okay. Having said that, so I I've mentioned the stem, the segmentation. So let me just go through this a little bit as as the last uh, aspect of, of today's lecture. A little bit what uh, what kind of segmentations uh, can we use here in regards to destination marketing so geography what does that mean where do the potential tourists come from so let's say i've got a, in, i i need to market uh, london as a destination so i need to look at what kind of tourists can do they come from mainland europe do they come from the us and so on. So that is the geographical segmentation. In other words, where do these tourists come from? Then I also need to look at uh, to assess how you know how old are these tourists? Is this is this mainly for the, in terms of age, in terms of the different sociodemographic characteristics? So is it more like families coming together? Or is it more like a honeymoon destination, like let's say Maldives? Yeah. So that that is a household composition, or education, occupation, income. These are all examples of sociodemographics. Yeah. 
psychographic. So how these tourists are. So are they uh, more, you know, culturally oriented or are they more like, uh, are they more interested in history and so on? What are their lifestyle? What are their activities, interests? So that is in terms of the psychological profile, the personality profiles. Um, behavior, are they, and that is a term here, are they um, here visiting for the first time or are they repeat visitors? So when we're talking about segmentation by behavior, it means just are they first time at the destination or have they been there before? So first time versus repeat visitors. And I've mentioned the product related one. So going into more details, what does that mean? If uh, that destination's got golf courses, people would go uh, there, golfers would go there, or if they got casinos, people who like to gamble would go there, or wine areas, wineries, wine enthusiasts would go there. So it's product related. People would go there because of a specific product, man-made product to that destination, right? And coming towards the end here, this trip purpose. Of course, do they go there just for pleasure? Do they go there to visit friends, family? And or do they go there for business? Yeah, or other personal travel. So this is the different if if I say what is a segmentation by trip purpose, it means do they go there on business? Do they go there on pleasure? Do they go there to visit friends and and relatives yeah once i have this segmentation then i realize okay who do i want to target for the destination who are the best market to bring the best return on investment for the destination so who brings most money but not only obviously short term but long term of course sustainability in in mind as well so long term who, who what is the best return on investment which which markets are the best uh, markets to aim for and then once i decide that that's they decide to position myself as a uh, position help position the destination in other words making sure that I have that is the process of establishing distinct and maintaining a distinctive place in the market uh, in the market as you can see here for an organization or its individual product offering so just to give you a clear example so what is going to be the slogan for the destination like let's say we know like incredible India or uh, beautiful Bangladesh or um, I love New York. That's that's all this um, you know this obviously slogans for destinations um, by name slogan promotion links. How do you want to promote that? So that's all like making sure that you position that brand uh, in a solid uh, matter. So that all relates to the successful destination uh, positioning, um, making sure that you can cut through that noise because the problem recently has been that there are too many destinations, always new destinations coming up. And how can you make sure that people choose you as a destination? So that is the USP, obviously, how can the uniqueness, the unique selling point of that destination, how can you cut through that information noise and actually reach that potential uh, consumer? So that's something also that we've obviously talked about a lot, as I said, in the in the in the seminars as well, in in the labs, as with all the things that we've that I've mentioned, you know, today is just one way, as I said, that it's, it's the, the, the lecture, but we have this lab, so I said, we have this field trips, amazing field trips on this module, and I'm just showing you here again that the Hastings uh, residential field trips that's in the in the first year that I normally do for the for the first year students on on this module on the opportunities and resources in tourism uh, module and um, yeah it, it, so we, we teach it through a variety of ways and always really making sure that you understand that you have the option to you know, give us a draft that that you have the option to uh, check with us uh, in um, in a way that is uh, convenient 
uh, for you. Yeah, so that is just something to remind you of. So that's, um, I think we are on time, just uh, and, uh, just just on time. So I uh, wanted to share with you some of the references for today's lecture, because that's what we do at the end of the lecture. We always write uh, some of the some of the sources that that. Um, uh, so these are some of the articles that I have uh, co authored, as you can see, uh, that are on this topic on this uh, topic that I'm passionate about the destination image. But obviously, I teach a lot of different things. And I've been teaching tourism for a long time now as as a lot of my colleagues on on the uh, on the program so we're really uh, passionate about what we do we you know, come from really diverse background which is brilliant as well because you know you get to learn so you so many different perspectives as well also academically different so you you really it's it's good to have these differing differing views that actually um, and you make you make your own judgments you make your own in a very supportive um, environment i would say yeah so that's uh, yeah i want to share that with you and just want to say thank you very much for uh, coming for staying until until the end of today's lecture much appreciated and you're really hope that you will enjoy the course um, because we are doing everything we can so that you can um, see, enjoy enjoy the course as well. Um, and as I say, you've got all our support. So thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you very much you so everyone much. for coming. There are no questions submitted, so we will finish the webinar now. All right. Thank you. Bye. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.